This is, perhaps, a stereotypical scene of a pre-modern era war. Cannons firing, men charging into battle, horses wildly flailing their legs. All of these are what you probably think of when you hear the term 19th century war. You also probably think that a war lasts a while, maybe a year or two, and if it's long, maybe up to 10. Probably not 38 minutes though, right? Because then it's barely even called a war, right? Wrong. Because there most definitely was a war that lasted 38 minutes, and it was between England and the Zanzibar Sultanate, a sultanate that ruled an area in modern-day Kenya. What happened in it? This is the British Empire at the close of the 19th century. An empire on which the sun never set, the British Empire was at one point the largest empire in history. How did they get so big? Wars. They'd fight the locals, win, and add the newly acquired land to their ever-growing empire. One of these wars was the Anglo-Zanzibar War. This war was also the shortest recorded war in history. Depending on who you ask, it lasted anywhere from 38 to 45 minutes, but more on that later. What was going on there? Well, Britain basically had control over the Zanzibar Sultanate, since the previous ruler was basically Britain's puppet. He'd do whatever they asked for, and when he died, the British wanted a sultan who would do what they wanted, basically another puppet. On August 25th, 1896, the sultan who was a puppet for the Brits, Sultan Sayyid Hamad bin Tuwaini al Busaid, died. Have fun laughing at my pronunciation. But Sultan Sayyid Hamad, I'll just call him Hamad. Sultan Hamad was suspected to have been poisoned. Who poisoned him? It was probably his cousin, Sayyid Khalid bin Bargash al Busaid. Again, feel free to laugh at my pronunciation. Now, his cousin Khalid claimed the sultanship, becoming Sultan Khalid. The British didn't like this. They bought up an old treaty that said that Zanzibar couldn't pick a new sultan without approval from the Brits. The British consul told them that the British wouldn't approve of him being the sultan. Sultan Khalid didn't care. He started amassing his army, which was like a speck of dust before the British army. Or the British navy. Or any branch of the British military for that matter. The Sultan was basically inviting a war with the British Empire. Remember, all of this happened in one day, August 25th, 1896. The day after, August 26th, was relatively quiet. That's not to say though that nothing happened, just no fighting. The British brought in some of their cruisers, which are basically big ships. Powerful big ships. That have really big guns. And can also launch torpedoes. Also on the 26th, the British came an ultimatum to Sultan Khalid. Either Sultan Khalid would step down and leave the palace by 9am on the 27th, or the British would attack the city. The next day, on the 27th, at 8am, an hour before the ultimatum expired, the Sultan sent a messenger to the British. The messenger wanted to see if there was a way out of the whole situation. The British replied that the only way that Sultan Khalid would live would be to agree to the terms and step down. The messenger went back to the Sultan, and the Sultan had another message for the British. He wouldn't agree. Furthermore, he taunted the British, saying that they were making empty threats and they wouldn't actually fire on the city. The British replied, quote, We do not want to open fire, but unless you do as you are told, we shall certainly do so. Imagine that in a British accent now. At 8.55am, the British still hadn't heard any news from the Sultan. And so, the Brits prepared to fire. At 9am, the British readied their guns. At 9.02am, the British started firing on the town of Zanzibar, where the palace was located. The Sultan fled. At 9.40 a.m., the British stopped firing, since the Sultan's guns had all been silenced, red destroyed, and Sultan Khalid's flag on the palace was no longer waving. Later that day, the British installed Hamoud bin Muhammad at the Sultan, since he was pro-British. What happened to Sultan Khalid? He fled to the German embassy, and they sent him to German East Africa. In 1917, he was captured by the British, since they were fighting Germany in World War I, and he was then exiled again to St. Helena. Incidentally, that's the same island to where Napoleon was exiled. He was then transferred to the Seychelles, and then to Mombasa, where he died in 1927. As for the aftermath of the war, about 500 Zanzibaris died, including civilians. Why is the number so high? Well, because the Zanzibari palace was made out of wood, which meant that it burned really, really easily. Oh, and another thing. Why, you may ask, did the Brits even let the Sultanate continue? Why didn't they just take over Zanzibar? The answer was that with preserving the Sultanate, the British Empire could save some money and not have to worry about the welfare of its citizens. Not that the British Empire really cared about all that. Another thing that might be on your mind is that I said previously that the war lasted anywhere from 38 to 45 minutes. Why is that? 
Well, some people count the war as beginning at 8.55 a.m. when the British started preparing their guns, which would make the war 45 minutes long. Some also count the war as beginning at 9.02 a.m. when the guns started firing, which would make the war 38 minutes long. This video uses the second interpretation. So that's the story of the 38 minute war. If you liked the video, then be sure to subscribe and like. If you didn't like the video, well then press the dislike button twice and then for good measure press the like button. Thank you for watching Explained. New videos every other Friday.